Hey everybody, um, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while, just been enjoying the off season. It's been so nice to not be stacked up with stuff. It's getting to be that time of the year where I need to start doing some, some of the maintenance stuff on these mowers now that they're out there. Thankfully, leaf cleanup really wasn't bad at all for us this year. So um, here today with a real short video, the fuel gauge on the bad boy stopped working. So I figured to make a quick video content about that since uh, apparently it's a pretty common problem, uh, not unique to Bad Boy, but to a lot of mowers in general. I don't know about other fuel tank designs, but at least the one in Bad Boy, thankfully, is just a simple mechanical gauge, a float, two reels with a bent piece of metal here, and as that float goes up and down in between those two guides, um, it makes adjustments on there. For whatever reason, the Bad Boy, it just stopped working and uh, checked it. It wasn't bound at all. Put a little bit of uh, lubricant on the slides. Um, just nothing worked with it. You, know, you take it out of the mower and it would slide back and forth just like this one, but um, contacted my dealer. They contacted Bad Boy. Bad Boy sent a replacement out, bam. So even if it wasn't something that they were taking care of for me, um, I don't think this would be a very expensive part. So that's that's a plus. I think this is easy. So the reason I want to make the video is that it's, it's a straightforward repair, but just in case you guys are having the same issue or problem with a mower, maybe not necessarily Bad Boy, but if you guys have a similar fuel gauge design, just wanted to show how I did it. I'm sure there are probably better ways to do this if you have a specialized tool or something like that, but I'm just going to use two screwdrivers and we're going to get that thing uh, get that thing replaced. So the first thing that I want to do is just take a little bit of motor oil here, and I mean just a little slick of it. And I want to grease up the, the new ring that's going to go in there. Just, like I said, an ever so slight bit. You really can't even tell that um, it's there, but bam, that's done. So that should help guide that in there. All right, I'm gonna get you guys repositioned back here on the trailer so you guys can see what I'm up to. Okay, you guys should be able to see in here, that our fuel gauge is right here on the top, and there's like a little bit of a, on the bad boy at least, there's a little bit of a gap in between where the pad, the operator pad, and the top of your instrument panel and control panel is where you can actually see down there. So I like having that, that fuel gauge just to know where I'm at. And it's been out for about a month or two. It just slowly started to get sticky and wouldn't read and then it would finally just started reading empty or full and just staying there and hanging up. So if I was smart and I wanted to look professional, I would have tested this method out before I turned the camera on so I looked like I knew what I was doing. But that's just not my style. Now, I, I, admittedly, I have actually already removed this once um, just to see that I could. Um, but, you know, like I said, there may be some special tool or better tool to try pulling this with. But what I found is just tools that everybody should have. Um, and what I use is just a simple screwdriver. Put one up underneath one side of this guy. Just kind of get it pried up just a little bit. I mean, these things are fit very, very snug in the tank. And then once I had enough spacing underneath there, I was able to kind of wedge two of them up underneath and start to pry. So I literally just got them up. And, and keep in mind, this has been pulled off once. If you haven't pulled this off yet, this can be extremely difficult to do the first time around. This one's, oh, of course I say that it's going to be easy. Now if you can keep one end up and lift from the other. Nice equal forces there. there ah, they are pressed in there really well. There we go. There you go. And that's it. And I've got nothing. I got no idea when it's out of the tank. It's not binding at all. I don't know if the float became saturated or something. I mean, this is a solid, I don't know what the float's made out of, but I don't know if fuel just worked its way into all the porous materials of that float. Because, yeah, you tell me why that's binding. I haven't a clue. Now we're left with a nice clean hole there. Sink our other fuel gauge into, which immediately floated up, so I got nothing as far as why it did that. Now, what it looks like the best option here is to take and an 
I mean, these things are cut so fine. Take out our gasket. And drop our gasket. Let's take a little bit of oil. Just oil the inside. The outside, like I said, I'm just using 20W50 motor oil there, Lucas brand. Which I, I need to do the, um, oh, oops. I need to do the, uh, my only concern is I do not want that getting pressed down into the tank. Okay, so nice and snug in there, really snug. Man, I tell you what, that's it's uncomfortably snug. I really don't want to break something, but. That kind of snapped back into place. And we got a working fuel gauge. Um, again, I'm not sure how much I'm gonna edit this video because like, I had to put pressure, get on top of it, put pressure just straight down and it snapped into place. It's a lot more pressure than I was comfortable putting on it, but with an open hand, I guess we didn't get any, everything's still working smoothly. Um, so yeah, that has changed out the gauge. And that should be working. All right, thank you guys for watching that. Again, I don't need coaching tips. There might be an easier way to do that, but so I wanted to make the video just to show how simple it was to get that new piece in. Not necessarily easy, but which is common everyday tools. Um, as far as upcoming stuff for the channel, I do want to go ahead and do a review on the bad boy. A lot of you guys have asked for it. I'm listening. Your comments on the other videos do not go unnoticed. That being said, obviously I wanted to get this repair done first. That's the only mechanical issue that I've had with this mower all year. The other thing is the blade deck. Um, it came from Bad Boy and I don't think it was leveled correctly. When I put it on one cutting height, it is always cut lower than the skag at the exact same height with tires inflated properly. So I think that deck needs to be leveled. So I've got to go and cut some spacers to get, make sure the blade height is proper and um, double check the manual to make sure I know exactly how they want the, butt, the, the, the deck level, what kind of an offset they may want from front to back, and then I want to level the deck. And I may make a video on that as well, but I want to do that first because obviously that is something that I feel this thing is not set properly on. I think that was just an oversight from the factory, but I want to have that experience, have some maintenance on it, so that way when I do that review, I can it can be a more well-rounded view as far as um, as far as the, the mower and the maintenance on the mower and all that. When I look at the uh, the hours on this thing, uh, I only had 34 hours, 34.4 hours are on this machine, which this machine was with us, I want to say the entire season this year. So that goes to show I'm not a big guy. Um, I don't do tons of work, and the skag definitely gets used a lot more. Then the, the 54 inch uh, bad boy, just because obviously that deck size. This thing cuts our little, I'd say we do mainly 5,000 to 10,000 square foot yards, and this thing's out there for no time at all. So um, it's not going to be a really long, uh, high hour review, but at least for one season, I can tell you guys how it worked for grass cutting, for leaves, and everything else like that. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys around. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy the content, please. Um, Subscribe to the channel if you're willing to. Put up with my ugly mug talking to you, just because that really helps me out with uh, with YouTube as far as getting um, getting this ship back, uh, getting this channel to partner status, so I can actually make a little bit of cash for making these videos, which doesn't do much other than pay for camera equipment. But thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys soon on the bad boy review and on maintenance stuff for both of them. That's another thing that I forgot to mention before I go is I do want to do the oil changes on the the engine 
and the, the um, transaxles on this one. The engine oil has already been changed once. I know generally how tough that is, but the transaxle I haven't touched yet. So changing the filters and the, uh, the oils in those, we'll do a video as well so that you guys can see exactly how they work. And I find these videos useful because whether you're you know, driving a Skag or a, uh, not specifically a Skag because most of them are using pump and wheel, but um, you know, Ferris and some of the other brands that are using the transaxles, um, I want to do a video out there so people can kind of see what they're getting into with those. So now, now we're at the end. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you guys around the next one.